Mercedes finally achieved what this tank can do. By the way, Mercedes isn't the first brand to do this. But this cool turn hides some genius engineering behind it. I mean, हाँ वीडियो को ध्यान से देखने पे ये तो समझ आ रहा है कि एक साइड के व्हील्स क्लॉकवाइज डायरेक्शन में घूम रहे हैं और दूसरे एंटी क्लॉकवाइज But this isn't possible in a normal petrol or diesel cars or even in EVs like Nexon EV or BE6e. So what allows Mercedes and Rivian to achieve this? Oh, we not an answer. So yeah, quad motors or four motors makes such tank turn possible because these motors are controlled independently. So the ECU will simply signal the motors on one side of the car to rotate in the clockwise direction while the others to rotate in the anti-clockwise direction. And bam! But there is a reason why majority of the EV manufacturers don't prefer four motors. Yeah, of course, more motors will consume more energy. Thus, they will require more battery capacity. That is the prime reason. But such powertrain makes even the simplest task like turning more complicated. Now, when it comes to making a simple turn, each wheel of the car follows a different path, which means the speed of each wheel would be different. It is because of the differential in a cars that makes turning a no-brainer. Because it divides the torque of the motor or the engine between the wheels as per the requirement. The bevel gears of a differential unit will simply rotate on their axis and transmit the torque to the wheel which has less resistance, which lets the car to turn smoothly, preventing any wheel from slipping. लेकिन जैसे ही हम गाड़ी में चार मोटर्स यूज करेंगे चलो चार नहीं लेकिन अगर सिर्फ दो मोटर्स भी यूज की ऑन द सेम एक्सल देन द सिंपल टास्क ऑफ टर्निंग बिकम्स कॉम्प्लिकेटेड बिकॉज द टास्क ऑफ डिफरेंशियल मस्ट नॉ बी डन इलेक्ट्रॉनिकली द रीजन बींग इसी ऑफ द कार कम्युनिकेट विथ ईच मोटर कंट्रोल यूनिट which controls the rpm of the motor in such conditions when the car takes a turn the ecu of the car will need to tell each motor control unit to change the rpm of their respective motor because if this doesn't happen one of the wheels will lose traction and it will start slipping which will make the car slightly difficult to drive i mean the car will start oversteering and not everyone is able to control oversteer right Now yes the ECU can tell the motor control unit of the inner wheels to not power those wheels at all those wheels will slow down eventually for that much period of time and if those wheels require to slow down further more the ECU can simply apply brakes on them just like it does in traction control or the stability control but this will affect the life of brake pads so it is necessary that the ECU is programmed to do all the calculations and these calculations are not simple Because for every angle of the steering wheel the ECU has to calculate the curvature of the path each wheel has to follow. This is only possible when the turning circle radius of the car is known. Ab jo turning circle radius gaadi ke spec sheet mein diya hota hai uska koi kaam nahi hai yahan pe because the turning circle radius of the car changes with the steering wheel position. So we need to program the ECU to calculate the turning circle radius of the car based on the steering wheel position and then it will calculate the curvature of each wheel. With this the ECU can also calculate the distance each wheel has to cover. The program will then use this value and the data from the accelerator pedal position sensor to calculate the speed of each wheel which it will then communicate to the individual motor control unit and thus the vehicle will be able to turn properly. ECU does all of these calculations in split second. और अब समझ आ रहा है ना ये कितना कॉम्प्लिकेटेड है दिस एंटायर प्रोसेस इज कॉल्ड टॉक वेक्टरिंग एंड द एल्गोरिदम दैट आई एक्सप्लेन इन दिस वीडियो इज द मोस्ट बेसिक एल्गोरिदम ऑफ टॉक वेक्टरिंग नाउ आई हैव क्रिएटेड अ वन डी सिमुलेशन मॉडल टू शो केस हाउ दीज कैलकुलेशंस आर डन बट बिफोर जंपिंग इनटू इट लेट मी टेल यू दिस ऑल द फार्मूलास दैट आई एम यूजिंग ओवर हियर आर स्ट्रेट फ्रॉम माय बुक व्हीकल डायनामिक्स इन अ शेल इफ यू आर डिजाइनिंग एनी व्हीकल सिस्टम स्पेशली फॉर बाहा और एफएसए देन यू शुड डेफिनेटली रीड दिस बुक A lot of student teams are already relying on it and many of them have told me how much easier it becomes to understand the concepts clearly which in turn help them build a well performing car. Yeah, so using those formulas from Vehicle Dynamics in Nutshell, I created a 1D simulation model over here. Now yes, I must admit that ye program likhne ka kaam AI ka tha because I didn't want to spend time coding and because I don't want to get carpal tunnel syndrome. <laughs> and uh, yeah but i had to let the ai know what this program should do so in this program i asked the ai to create a drive cycle of the steering position which starts at the center then it rotates to the right side then comes back to the center then rotates to the left side and then again back to the center all right i'm not going to talk about this program because there are some mistakes in it first and foremost 
chat gpt actually did not consider whatever inputs or the boundary conditions that i asked it to consider it generated a program to actually create a graph that i wanted to see anyways i decided to write the program myself and while working on it i felt ki it would be difficult for the computer to understand or identify which wheel would be enough like basically let's say if you are taking a left turn then as a driver we know that front left wheel is going to be the inner wheel and when we take a right turn then of course the front right wheel is going to be the inner wheel from the perspective of a driver okay ye cheez computer nahi samajh sakta and in these formulas it is necessary to identify which is the inner and the outer wheel secondly the formulas that i am considering uses the data of the front wheel's angle okay left side pe turn lene ke baad inner wheel kitna angle pe turn hota hai outer wheel kitna angle pe turn hota hai that is required so this particular program was actually not using that data and that's why i decided that let's not consider the input on the steering wheel instead let's simply consider the angle of the front wheel so i created a drive cycle of the angle of the front wheels in this drive cycle both the front wheels will start at 0 degree position which will be the straight line then they will be rotated in such a way that the inner wheel will rotate till 55 degrees of angle while the outer wheel will rotate till 45 degree of angle okay using this data we can actually calculate the turning circle radius of the car and the radius of the curvature of all the wheels that are supposed to follow and from that we can calculate the angular velocity of the car and thus the velocity of each wheel and this is the output that Okay. So in this graph, the blue and the green line indicates the speed of the outer wheels, the outer front and the outer rear wheel, while the orange and the red line showcases the speed of the inner wheels, both the inner front and the inner rear. As we take a turn, yes, of course, the velocity of the outer wheel is going to be high compared to the velocity of the inner wheels, and that's what we see over here. That the velocity of the blue line is actually higher than the other four wheels. Now, yes, in this particular diagram, yes, there is some flaw. There might be some mistake with my formula because of which. You can see over here the inner wheel has higher velocity, higher velocity than the outer rear wheel, which actually is incorrect. Because to be honest, outer rear wheel should actually follow a path which has larger curvature than the inner front wheel. Okay, so I might have made some mistake with the formula in the program, but uh, yes, in such a way the ECU can actually calculate the velocity of each wheel and then convert this value into a digital data. or a digital input which it will provide to the motor control unit of each motor of the car so yeah that's the most basic torque vectoring algorithm which uses some basic physics formulas and uh, some steering system formulas yeah that's it ab yahan pe jo maine graph mein plot karke dikhaya hai uska mujhe ek actual working model banana hai like basically i want to create a table top version of this with four bldc motors that uses this program and of course some addition to this program will be necessary to control all the electronics to show torque vectoring in real time also this could be a good final year project idea for you guys and to make such model you will need to read vehicle dynamics in a nutshell just so you know parul university has listed this book as one of the reference books for the subject of vehicle dynamics taught in the final year btech automobile engineering Now yes this is the most basic torque vectoring algorithm reality mein is algorithm ko feedback diya jata hai so the ecu will take the data from the wheel speed sensor and the vehicle gyrid data from the gyro sensor and the accelerometer to determine the slip angle of each wheel with this data the ecu will come to know if the vehicle is turning properly or is it under steering or over steering and thus it will correct it out you will get a much clearer idea about how this works and of course how traction control and stability control works if you know how vehicles imu functions And luckily in this video I actually made an IMU using an accelerometer and a gyro sensor and recorded their data. So you should watch this video and learn how a vehicle's IMU works. Now I will see you guys on next Thursday at 7:30 p.m. Peace.